There are seven billion people on the planet today. The world's population has more than doubled since 1960, and we're expected to hit almost 10 billion in about 30 years. The population boom of the past century encouraged an abundance of advancements in food safety, science, and convenience. These have helped us to improve our food and quality of life. We've moved well beyond man's original diet of grubs and soft roots. Through various breeding techniques, we've genetically modified almost every fruit and vegetable we eat to encourage more desirable traits like size, flavor, and resistance to insects, diseases, and weeds. For example, the wild ancestor of the tomato was the size of a berry. A handful of wild, bitter almonds contained enough cyanide to kill you. And genetic changes from breeding the wild mustard plant are how humans created Brussels sprouts, broccoli, cauliflower, and kale. Developed countries have healthier and safer fortified foods. Despite the fact that we're currently dedicating over 38% of the Earth's ice-free land to farming, 795 million people worldwide still go hungry each day. The total land devoted to agriculture is 20 million square miles. That's more than five times the area of the United States. As the demand for food increases, the amount of land dedicated to its production cannot continue to grow. If 20 million square miles grew at the same pace as the demand for food, it would increase deforestation, extinction of species, and a greenhouse gas impact that's more than cars, trains, and airplanes combined. So how do we feed the world with the space we have? A few critical steps in the food production process need to be improved starting with the reduction of food waste. Approximately half of all food is wasted, either lost between production and consumption, or thrown out before it reaches a human stomach. The other pressing issue is increasing yield, or the amount of usable food we can grow, and doing it in a way that's sustainable on the land already dedicated to agriculture. We're doing this through organic farming and conventional farming, and by using genetically engineered crops. None of these alone is the perfect solution. Conventional farming typically produces a higher yield than organic, but it uses more water due to poor soil water retention. It's also dependent on synthetic nitrogen fertilizer, the runoff of which can contribute to groundwater pollution. Organic farming is friendlier to the soil, but it could require even more lands to make up for a typically lower yield. Genetic engineering can improve plants by building in mechanisms that help reduce the use of pesticides and water and increase the efficiency of fertilizer. It can even help produce necessary vitamins and reduce carcinogens. One of the factors affecting use is a disconnect between public attitudes and scientific opinion. In a 2015 study, 57% of the general public thought genetically modified foods were unsafe to eat while 88% of scientists said they're generally safe. When the public is on the same page as science, progress tends to happen faster. Ultimately, there's no simple solution to how we feed the world. It's a global issue with mitigating factors ranging from culture, diet, available environment, natural resources, local economics, and infrastructure. Consumers, farmers, and scientists coming together to examine all available options can help us gain a deeper understanding of the food supply chain and how it impacts the world around us. A healthy planet and healthy population depend on it.